Hi, I'm Craig Phillips, and in this video, I'd like to explain to you some of the differences between a handful of hammers that are commonly used around the house and by trades. The most common hammers we see every day is the claw hammer. Very easy to identify with the bent claw at the back. Got a flat surface, of course, for hammering in the nails, and then the claw at the rear helps lever the nails out. This one is a fiberglass shaft designed for comfort and anti-vibration. This particular claw hammer is a drop forged steel and it's a continuation steel right the way through the hammer into the bottom of the handle. It has an impact absorbent non-slip rubber handle. The next hammer is the ball pane hammer. And again, this is quite easy to identify. It has a ball on the end here. More used for engineering, for hammering out steel and metals. There's a large flat area like you expect on most hammers for shaping the metal and then the ball point is for hammering in rivets. The shafts come in different materials. This is a hickory wooden handle one. Very comfortable, quite a traditional shape handle. It also has the fiberglass handle, which is designed to absorb some of the impact when hammering. And these are the rubber mallets. Quite easy to identify. One's a black one and one's a white one. The black one is a little bit more dense on the rubber, designed for more heavier work. Often used with ground workers when they're laying slabs into the sand and they're hammering down to get their level. Uh, hardwood handles for the strength. The white one is a more softer material, designed for installers, often used by window fitters, etc. Where you're hitting a surface that doesn't want to get marked, this is ideal for that. And both rubber mallets come with hardwood handles for strength. Then you have the lump hammer. This is designed for light demolition and often mason workers and bricklayers use them when hammering chisels and bolsters to break up bricks and blocks. They come in a two pound range and a four pound range for more heavier work, of course. You can get the fiberglass handle, likewise with the hardwood handle. This one is the brick hammer, quite easy to identify. A square flat face, a hammering on the one side and then the long chisel like on the back most commonly used with bricklayers when they want to break a brick in half they hold it in one hand and actually chop it gently around all four sides of the brick until it breaks this is a drop forged steel hammer so the whole head is steel and continues through the shaft right the way down to the handle which is then surrounded by a rubber non-slip handle now this little fella is a warrington hammer often known as a panel pin for lightweight and small panel nails to simply tapping them in with the standard head of the hammer and then turning it over to finish it off with the pointy section. This unusual hammer is called a scutch hammer. It's a double-ended one and it has removable blades in both ends designed for dressing brick and block work. If a brick is dirty with mortar on it, it can be easily chiseled off and cleaned up. It's also good for chasing out lines through a soft masonry wall if you're installing pipes and electrics and you want to have them flushly plastered over. And the shaft is a tubular chrome plated shaft with a soft grip handle for comfort. Whenever purchasing any hammers, make sure that it has a batch code either on the head of the hammer or the shaft. This batch code can be traced back to the manufacturers so you can be assured that it meets all necessary safety standards. So hopefully that's given you a little bit more of an insight of what hammers are available and what they're best used for.